Hi there, my name's Catherine. I hope you're doing well. Today's going to be my June reading wrap up. June was a relatively good reading month for me, although I did have a DNF, unfortunately, and it was quite a, a disappointing DNF as well because every other book I've read by this author I've given five stars to. So I'm going to start off talking about that book so that we get the disappointment out of the way and we don't end the video on a bad note. So the book I ended up DNFing was The Poppy War by RF Quang. Sorry if you can hear Sienna growling. <laughs> She's looking out the window at the moment, protecting the house. So as I said, every other RF Quang book I've read, Babel, yellow face I've given five stars to. I'm so excited for, I can't remember the name of the book that she's coming out with the next year. I think she is an amazing writer, isn't letting herself be tied down to one specific genre which I love. The Poppy War was her debut novel and the first in a trilogy I'm pretty sure. I think I could really feel that going in. So The Poppy War is a fantasy novel about an orphan called Rin who is about to be forced off into marriage and the only way she can think of to get out of it is by passing this really prestigious exam into a military school basically. She passes the exam and goes off to this military school and we're watching her train to be a soldier pretty much. I'm used to books like this following a certain formula. Usually in a kind of school setting book, you're in the school for the whole book and you follow your character's arc throughout a school year or multiple school years. In this book though, the first half is her in the academy but it spans very quickly over four years. I think it's four years and then the second half is basically she's out of the academy and straight into like a kind of war military zone setting and that is where it lost it for me. I really wanted to spend more time in the academy setting. I wanted to spend more time watching Rin training and at the end of the day that is not the story that RF Quang was wanting to tell which is fair enough but for me it just became too much of a military plot and I got to over halfway through it and I just I knew that I wasn't going to be going in a direction that I personally want to read right now so I just I gave it up. Please let me know if you've read this trilogy if you kind of relate to what I'm saying but you carried on and you would recommend that I carry on because it might be the case that I just need to push through the first book and get to the next two and I'll really enjoy the next two. I'm not sure. My husband has read the first book. I think he thought that the main character was too angry and her anger was seeping into his emotional <laughs> well-being. I personally didn't have a problem with that. I really liked the character of Rin and I really liked the whole cast of characters really. I just wanted to spend more time with these characters <laughs> and get to know them more within this school setting but we just raced through it. So let's get into the books that I've actually read and finished this month. The first book I read was The Puppet Master by Sam Holland. This is the third in a series she's doing. I think it's called the Serious Crimes Unit series or something like that but it's basically a detective series. Each book is focused on hunting down a different serial killer. I really enjoyed the first two books in this series. I found them really gripping. I found them really scary. I did find them a bit predictable. I managed to figure out what was going on before the reveal came in both books but Sam Holland really captures the overall vibe of what she's going for and has really interesting characters and character arcs and the actual serial killers are very interesting and she usually puts you in the mind of the serial killer as well throughout the book in little snippets of chapters which I really enjoyed and those were the bits that really terrified me. The Puppet Master unfortunately is my least favourite one that she's released so far. This serial killer is killing his victims by kind of psychologically torturing them from afar and causing them to end their own lives and we're following detectives who we've already gotten to know in previous books. I rated this three stars because I did have a good time reading it but it didn't give me the same kind of creepy crawly feeling that the previous two books did that I think Sam Holland really excels at achieving. The serial killer in this book wasn't as interesting to me. I know these books are melodramatic but the the ending of this book, the reveal of who the serial killer is and everything, it all didn't quite come together for me personally. Whereas in the other two books, whilst I thought they were a bit predictable, they were satisfying to me. I didn't find this book particularly satisfying, the reveal. This wouldn't necessarily be my, my first recommendation to someone but I wouldn't put someone off reading it, although I would 
I would recommend reading the ones that came before first. The next book I read was Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. I have already talked about this in a video I did where I was reading books I predicted to be five stars. I ended up giving this 4.5 stars. I really, really loved it. This book is set in New York over the span of seven days in June hence the title, and it follows our main character Eva Mercy who is a best-selling erotica writer and an award-winning novelist called Shane Hall who writes more literary fiction, doesn't publish as often, is kind of a recluse, a mystery, and they met when they were teenagers before either of them were writers, had this whirlwind romance, again I think it was over a span of seven days, and have not seen each other since until I think this is maybe 15 years later. They run into each other in New York and fall back into old patterns and fall back into this intense love that they held for each other. That's the main story we're seeing but we're seeing glimpses through chapters that flash back to when they first met and seeing how they were within, when they were teenagers and why it was that they bonded so much. This book was just so so easy to read. The writing was very conversational and and chatty which meant that it was really fast-paced and you really got to know these characters so well but then there would also be sections that Tia Williams would write something that would just punch you in the gut pretty much. I think Eva and Shane were both really really likeable protagonists and I think what was so impressive about this book is that selling the concept that these two people knew each other only for seven days when they were teenagers but fell into such a passionate love with each other that they have been essentially writing books to each other for 15 years that they've never stopped thinking about each other that they can't walk away from each other when they're back in each other's lives selling that is quite difficult but tia williams really really did. I fully believed why these characters loved each other so much. I didn't quite give it a five stars because there were parts through the book where we weren't in either Eva or Shane's point of view. We kind of came into Eva's daughter's point of view or Eva's mum's point of view and I really loved these chapters. They were so well written but I did find while I was reading it that I just wanted to be back with Eva and Shane. But I mean the chapter is specifically from Eva's mother's point of view I thought was exceptional and really well placed within the book because throughout the whole book her mother is talked about so so much but you never hear from her you never really meet her until this point of view so you go in with the preconception of her but yes I would highly recommend this book. Next I read What the River Knows by Isabel Ibanez and I adored this book. This was 4.75 stars for me. I really wanted to give it a 5 stars. The only reason I didn't was because the pacing was a little bit off for me and also our main character became a little bit annoying as well in the way that she wasn't asking enough questions that should have been being asked throughout the book. But this is basically set in a more magical version of our world in the 19th century. Our main character Inez grew up in Buenos Aires but she ends up travelling to Egypt Egypt when her parents die in Egypt but she doesn't believe that they have died or at least she doesn't believe that the story she has been told about their deaths is true. So she travels to Egypt against her family's wishes to meet with her uncle who also doesn't want to want her to be there, keeps trying to send her away because she wants to figure out what really happened to her parents. There she meets Wit who is a English man with a mysterious past. We know that he was a soldier but he doesn't like to talk about it, doesn't like to talk about his family, doesn't like to talk about anything but he does like to flirt and flirt he does. He flirts so much with Inez. This book was just <laughs> everything I like in a book. The setting was magical but in our world which I love and it was in Egypt and it was all about ancient Egypt and artifacts and archaeology which is so fun and so cool. Ancient Egypt was my favourite topic that we learned in primary school. Even though I said that the main character in is, is annoying um, at points because she's not asking any of the right questions, I do really love her. She literally has the whole world against her. Nobody wants her in Egypt but she doesn't let that face her and she just throws herself into the most mental of situations, doesn't really think things through, is a bit daft. There are many times throughout this book where I was like why aren't you doing this thing? Why haven't you checked there? Why would you not? And that was frustrating. So many things that happened could have been avoided. But you know I can forgive it for that because the relationship between Inez and Wit 
is what really shines in this book against the backdrop of this like amazing setting their kind of enemies to lovers conflict opposing needs and wants it's so exquisite and the ending of this book my jaw was on the floor i can't wait for the second book to come out at the end of this year i love this the next book i read was a study in drowning by ava reed and this was five stars i love this book this is a fantasy book but very dark academia. It follows our character Effie who is in a world that is plagued with misogyny pretty much. She is studying at a university where she wanted to study literature but the literature course does not accept women because the world believes that women don't have minds for it. So instead she settles for being on the architecture course but within that course she's still the only woman studying. There is an author that she's obsessed with who has recently passed away and the author's son wants an architecture student to come out and redesign the home to make it more livable in um, and Effie wins the competition to be able to do this so she's really excited that she'll get to redesign the house of her favourite author however when she gets there there's another student there a literature student called Preston who she finds out is determined to prove that the author was a fraud obviously a romance ensues between these two and this is kind of like like academic rivals to lovers I guess but that surprisingly wasn't my favourite part of this book. Again this setting was just impeccable. The manor house that she is redesigning is set like down the other end of the country that they live in right on the coast and the way Ava Reed describes this place it's like you can taste the salt from the sea and everything. It's always raining, it's always gloomy. The house that she's redesigning is like falling apart. It's cold, it's wet, it's gloomy and they're trapped there. The other thing that I love about this book is the the themes within it. Obviously, like I said before, there's so much misogyny in this book. Our main character is dealing with some trauma as well that was inflicted upon her by her advisor at the university. And whilst her and Preston are uncovering this great mystery surrounding the author, they uncover even more evidence of the terrible effects of the misogyny in this world. And I think it's handled so well. There's a quote on here by Alison Saft that says, a love letter to stories and to everyone silenced or forgotten in their retelling and I think that's such a perfect quote because that is what this book is truly about at the heart of it. I loved it. The next book I read was Strange Sally Diamond by Liz Nugent and this was also a five star read. I wasn't expecting to love this as much as I did. I was expecting to enjoy it but this just blew me completely away. This is essentially about a woman called Sally Diamond who was adopted when she was younger. She doesn't remember anything of her life before nine years old and when her dad dies instead of phoning an ambulance or the police or whatever she takes his body outside and burns it in their incinerator in their garden because he had previously told her whenever he died just to put him out with the bins obviously he had not meant this seriously but that is how the book opens and that gives you an immediate insight into who Sally is she struggles to understand sarcasm and jokes she takes everything very literally obviously following on from this she is investigated by the police because you can't just do that and when she finds that her dad left her a letter she discovers that everything she believed about her childhood has not been true and so for the rest of the book we learn where Sally came from how she came to be adopted by her parents and we watch her struggle to learn to live a life without the shelter of her father and mother who are now both dead she is forced to kind of go out into town and make friends friends and get a job and do the things that she's been able to avoid her whole life because they make her uncomfortable. In my last video where I read one star reviews, in someone's review they said that this book is Eleanor Oliphant meets The Room and they obviously give it one stars. I don't agree with that because I give it five stars but I think that is the perfect way to describe it. It is if you read Eleanor Oliphant and you've seen Room. I've not read Room. Is it a book? I think it's a book. This is kind of a perfect mixture of those books. It is very dark. I wasn't expecting it to be so dark when I went into it. I didn't even know it was a crime novel and I think that makes me an idiot because it says crime novel of the year on the front but it is really dark. I'd maybe look up some trigger warnings before going in but I absolutely loved it. I thought the ending of this book was maybe the most shocking ending that I've read this year and not because there was some great twist or anything. It's more just that the way this book ended I didn't not think it was going to end that way. <laughs>
The next book I read was Not In Love by Ali Hazelwood. I gave this book 2.5 stars, which I think might be the lowest I've rated an Ali Hazelwood book. I can't remember what I rated Bride, but it's certainly the lowest I've rated one of her Steminist fiction books. It just wasn't for me. It's very tonally different from her other STEM books. Ali Hazelwood even like has a note at the beginning that's like make sure to tell the reader this is not a romantic comedy. She refers to it more as erotic romance I think or erotic fiction. I can't remember. I first of all want to say like I really like that Ali Hazelwood isn't just sticking to one thing. I like that she's like playing with genres and trying out new things and just writing what she wants to write. J the fact that I haven't really enjoyed this book or Bride I'm not saying by any means that they're bad or that I think she should only be stick to writing the one formulaic plot over and over again. I don't believe that at all. It just so happens that these last couple of books haven't been for me. This book follows Rue and Eli who meet up for a one night stand. They meet over an app but they don't end up making it to the hotel room because Rue's brother turns up and is being quite aggressive towards her and Eli has to kind of step in and take her home instead. So they don't end up sleeping together or anything and then the next day at Rue's work she finds out that their company is being taken over by another company which nobody is happy about and Eli is one of the co-founders of this company. They like struggle with their attraction to each other because they don't want to overstep boundaries at the workplace or anything. They're both dealing with kind of a lot of trauma from their childhoods. That is definitely seeping into the way they handle relationships as adults. I think I just couldn't really relate to any of the characters in this book. I found the main conflict of this book was quite predictable from the very, very start. So I wasn't even really invested in the kind of workplace drama that was going on. And then the relationship between Rue and Eli, I just couldn't get behind. I just didn't buy into it at all. I, yeah, I don't really have much more to say. I'm still gonna read everything Hall Ali Hazelwood does. I do think she's an amazing writer, but this book just wasn't for me. The next book I read I got from the library. I'd never heard of it before. It was called The Other Woman by Sandy Jones, kind of psychological thriller about a woman called Emily who meets a guy called Adam and ends up falling in love with this guy but the presence of Adam's mother, Pammy, is looming over their relationship from the get-go. The further their relationship progresses, the weirder Pammy gets and the more hostile she gets and the more she makes Emily feel like she doesn't want her in her life. I rated this book three stars. It was really fun. It was a quick read. It kind of was everything you want from a psychological thriller. It was quite predictable where it was going to go and what was going on, I thought. But I liked it. It was enjoyable and I thought the kind of the wrap up at the end was satisfying. I had forgotten I'd read it when I looked there to see what book I'd read next, I was like, oh yeah. And then I was like, what happened again? So it's not gonna, it, it hasn't stuck with me at all really, but I did have a lot of fun while I was reading it. The next book I read was The Secret History by Donna Tart, which I had really high hopes for. I go on all the time about how much I like Dark Academia, but I had never read this book, which is the book that started Dark Academia. I had rated it four stars and just right now I've lowered it to 3.75 stars. The writing in this is really, really good. The characters are really, really good. The story is really, really good. And I really loved the first half of this book. The first half was five stars easy for me. It was the second half that kind of lost it for me. If you don't know what The Secret History is about, it is about a group of friends who go to the same college in America and they, study classics under a really eccentric professor who is very picky about who he lets into his classroom. They are what you would imagine a snooty dark academia group of friends to be. They're very rich, they're very snobby. Our main character Richard does not come from that background but he has ended up part of this group anyway and the book starts off by telling us that one of their friends, Bunny, is dead and the rest of them are responsible for his death. The first half of this book is like the lead up to Bunny's death and what happened and that it was so gripping. I loved it so much. Once Bunny dies however, the prose at that point I thought got a bit too much to wade through if you know what I mean. I did enjoy the overall atmosphere of this book and like I said the first half I thought the tension 
was held really nicely. There was a really nice balance between the style of writing that Donna Tartt kept up, the development of these characters and the lead up to the murder that takes place. But once that murder happens, I think she loses the tension that she managed to rack up in the first half and that's why I was a bit disappointed. I don't know if I'm gonna get a lot of hate for this take actually because people love this book. I maybe just went in with way too high expectations but I just think I've read better Dark Academia books than this even though I do appreciate that this really set the tone for what Dark Ad Academia would be. Next up I read All the Violet Tiaras Queering the Greek Myths by Jean Menzies which I got for my birthday from my friend Lucy. This was published in Scotland by 404 Inklings and it's just basically a wee book. It's only 100 pages and it's split into an introduction, three chapters and a conclusion which all explore this kind of recent fascination with Greek myths and retelling Greek myths with a focus on queer relationships at the heart of these. Think like Song of Achilles is the best known example and as someone who loves a Greek retelling I found this so so interesting and I got so many recommendations in this book of things to read in the future. Menzies kind of explores why it is that so many authors turn to Greek mythology to explore queer identities and relationships and she does so in a way that is really really easy to understand and really really funny. There was a bit I really like. She's talking about Hercules and he, she writes, his titular Disney debut has one of the best soundtracks ever composed, brackets, citation, me. <laughs> Her humour really shines through throughout the whole book. If you like Greek mythology and you are interested in why we're seeing so many Greek retellings in bookshops at the moment, I think this is such an interesting little book to look into and as well get some really good recommendations from. Finally, I ended this month on a romance. I read In the Weeds by B.K. Morrison, which is the second book in the Love Light Farms series of books. The first one was was it just called Love Light Farms? I think it was and it's like a set at Christmas time. Love Light Farms is a Christmas tree farm. This book follows the grumpy farmer of Love Light Farms called Beckett and social media star Evelyn. They met while on a business trip, separate business trips at the same place, had a kind of weekend fling. Then they re-met in the first book and had a very awkward encounter with each other. And now in this book, Evelyn has come back to Beckett's town because she's feeling lost in life and that is the last place that she remembered feeling happy in her job. And she ends up having to stay with Beckett and a romantic relationship ensues from there. I only gave this book 2.5 stars unfortunately. I really enjoyed the first book but there was something about this book that didn't hit for me. I think I didn't really connect to either of the characters and I found their relationship just a bit bleh. It was just a bit boring. I think maybe I'm not a grumpy sunshine lover which just seems weird because I love Luke and Lorelai and Gilmore Girls but it doesn't seem to be a trope that does well for me when I read it. I don't know, I feel like maybe you can't do many new things with it. It's just a bit tired at this point. I, I mean, I literally can't really remember much of what happened in that book, even though I've just read it. So that says a lot. I don't know, if you like Grumpy Sunshine, give it a chance because I think maybe it's just me not liking the trope. But I did definitely prefer the first book to this one. And I just read the third book. I just finished that yesterday and I'll talk about that in my July wrap up. And I that's been my favourite one so far. So... I think, mate, I think this one was just the relationship wasn't for me. And that's all I really have to say on it. So that's it. That is all the books that I read in June. I actually read so many good ones. Um, that was a good reading month. I hope that you also had a good month. Let me know what you've been reading in the comments. And I hope that you have an amazing upcoming week. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!